What looks at first glance like ancient art is actually a full-blown written language. But what does this homegrown Mesoamerican script teach us about the history of writing? A Maya stoneworker etches elaborate rows of characters onto a stela, a tall stone brought in from far away that's now standing straight up in the middle of the city. The characters he's carving look more like detailed pictures than writing, but don't let that fool you. Take a look at this block. It means mountain. But it's not a logograph standing for mountain. It's not a rebus symbol for think of a word that rhymes with schmountain. It's actually a block of two sound symbols that spell the word wheats, the Maya word for mountain. That's great for climbers, but chocolate lovers may instead prefer to sample these three symbols that together spell the word cacao, cocoa. There's a nifty shortcut here. This bit doesn't even mean ka. It's actually a syllable multiplier, or iteration mark if you want the fancy name. Shh, I think you're being watched. Over there, in the jungle? Maybe not. Hmm. Major moments in the history of writing. Both of these Maya glyphs combine syllable characters into blocks to write words. This is full-fledged sound writing. These aren't logographs that happen to be read as sounds. They are sounds, sounds capable of writing any syllable in the language. In a full syllabary, like the classical Maya script, there are separate characters for just about every possible syllable in the language. No longer must you invent new word characters. You can make do with a much smaller set of syllable characters. Nice. But syllable writing comes with its own set of problems. Here's a glyph that's quite useful around these parts. Jaguar. The word is actually balam. But have you noticed something about the Mayan syllabary? Consonant plus vowel, consonant plus vowel, more consonants plus more vowels. All of these syllables end in vowels. How in the world are you supposed to write the lam in balam? Shifty, scripty syllabaries have grappled with this problem and settled on two solutions. One. Leave out the final letter. Just ignore it. The term for this is underspelling because you're not fully spelling the word. And it's a good solution because, you know, ignoring your problems makes them go away. Option two, spell the last letter with an extra syllable, but use a syllable that just repeats the last vowel so that we know we can just ignore the final vowel. This gets called the echo vowel. Mayan likes number two, a lot. So cacao is kakawa. Well, ka times two wa. Wheats, the mountain, is actually wheatsi. And your new pet balam is spelled balama. Cross out the echo vowels and the words practically read themselves. Your new friend pulls you along to show you another project he's working on, an amate codex. That's a paper book. Yes, he has paper and yes, books. But that's not what's got him excited. He folds open the book he's working on, maybe to share new ideas? No. To brag about how inventive and potentially efficient his writing system is? No. For his people, the invention of the new wasn't about ditching the old. He shows you how creative he's been with the characters you learned. He shows you a mountain and calls it Wheats, and then a jaguar and calls it Balam. Logographs? Wait a second. You stop and ask him, which is the correct way to write Balam. He writes Balama. You ask him to write it again, and he writes the logograph, but with a syllable. And again, but he writes the logograph plus two syllables. He smiles mischievously. They're all Balam. This is what he's proud of. He can write the same word, even the same syllable, in different ways and combinations without repeating himself. Creative. But his use of logographs plus syllables recalls the tension between sound writing and meaning writing. Meaningful determinatives helped us choose the right pronunciation for our rebus character, and Mayan logographs can still do that. But the helping hand goes both ways. The syllabary can also clarify the sounds you should make when you read a logograph. Here's the character Jaguar, but add a couple extra syllable hints and you make it clear that we're meant to read this glyph as balama, minus the echo vowel, so balam. These are phonetic complements, pronunciation clues sitting comfortably alongside logographs. If that's all too complex, just remember that you can write everything in syllables. But 
Before you have time to settle into this land of balam and cacao to practice those syllables, a sandy wind starts blowing in from the east, a familiar reminder from a faraway land where even more dramatic changes are about to shape the future of writing. <laughs>